Hi, I'm Josh Maloney, the Supplemental Instructor for Professor Edder's Intro to Environmental Science at Cape Cod Community College. In this short video, I will introduce the concept of a quadrant to estimate population size. More specifically, I will conduct a hula hoop sampling. We can observe a variety of marine life in any season. I conducted this sampling on February 22nd, 2021, and it was 29 degrees out. It's not that bad for a Cape Cod. That being said, be safe and stay out of the water. The last thing we need is a student to be swept away by the ocean. If we go to a beach and pay close attention, we can observe a variety of marine life in any season. It can be difficult or nearly impossible to assess a whole beach, so randomly sampling consistently sized areas can be just as effective. In this way, you don't have to comb the entire beach. In a perfect world, a quadrant is one meter by one meter and is typically made out of PVC pipe. It's lightweight and easy to throw down randomly. If you don't happen to have a calibrated quadrant at home, then anything that is easy to move around that keeps a consistent size will do. I was going to use my hula hoop, but I spent way too long looking for mine and I never even found it. I used a short garden hose and connected the ends together. I could never find my hula hoop. And although this garden hose method worked great for the assignment, it worked terrible for hula hoop. So grab your hula hoop or any other device that keeps a consistent shape and head down to your beach. Note that the method of transects can be applied to pretty much anything. We can do this in forests, fields, at the bottom of the ocean, or in a parking lot. Here, I demonstrate how I did it on a parking lot. I took a picture of the hula hoop with my phone, which I later sketched. To prove you can do this with literally anything, I did it with the sign in the background. All I had to do was take a photo of my hose hula hoop and draw what was inside of it. Hopefully this shows the concept and now we can apply it to the environment. Although it is done randomly, some thought should be given to where the quadrant will go. Here, I threw it on sand so my sketch reflects that. Make sure to have some way of annotating which is which. Color-coded or labeled is great. The coast is characterized by change. The plants and animals that live here have many specialized adaptations. If you are comparing two different areas, you may choose to sample locations that appear very different. Maybe one has a lot of seaweed, a lot of grass, or is very sandy. Often, coastlines are very muddy, too. Using the camera on your mobile phone is a fantastic way to document in the field. Don't be afraid to move things around to see what type of critters could be in there. Just don't lose your phone and remember to dress appropriately. What plants and animals do you see? Often, clumps of seaweed are full of life and you may find periwinkles in there. Sometimes these critters will clump together. We don't need to rip them apart, but it's a good observation that we can make. You may find shells or other parts of critters. Even if only a part of an animal is present, can you identify it? Take a picture of it and try to identify it later. So now that you've had two areas that you can compare, what are the most common animals and what are the most common plants? It's a good idea to record information about the tides, weather, and sediment type to each location that you go. I hope that this helps you with several of your labs. Remember to reach out to me, Professor Etter, or the Tutoring Center with any questions.